Galaxy Land was opened in two phases. The first one was opened in 1983, and then the second one, the expansion, was 1985. The owner started with just a mall back in 81, and since then their plan was to always make an entertainment and shopping center. So they started off with a skating rink and an amusement park, and then it escalated from there to an indoor lake with submarines and a water park, mini golf, and it just kind of kept snowballing from there. Of its size and of its scale, it was the first major indoor amusement park, and it maintained the title of world's largest for a few years until it was surpassed by those in uh, the Middle East. The plan was to expand it further once the owner saw that it did well. Once uh, they opened the first phase of uh, Galaxy Land, it was originally called Fantasyland, and that was kind of a turn of the century European type town square, town center to that type of idea with some natural theming, some trees, uh, an outdoor vibe and water features, things like that. The owners decided they wanted to change it up uh, in 1995, and that's when it switched from the Fantasyland to Galaxy Land, which is a space age kind of uh, younger, uh, geared theme for kids. And, We've kind of just built on that, you know, outer world, out, outer space, uh, cartoon type yeah. feeling. And, you know, we're always exploring new options of, of retheming the future. So that's kind of a, something that we can look forward to in the coming years here. Galaxyland is famous for the Mindbender roller coaster, one of the last Schwarzkopf major coasters left in the world. So a lot of people will come even just to see it if they don't ride it. And uh, it still holds one of the world's records for highest G-force at about 5.6 Gs. owners were initially looking to build the park. They came across one of the original Schwarzkopf's um, at one of the like Oktoberfest, one of those festivals. Uh, it was the dryer looping. So Mindbender is actually a mirror image and larger version of that coaster and that's kind of where that inspiration came. We wanted to bring something unique from Europe that you know most North Americans hadn't seen at the time. And we also try and bring other rides that aren't so common. So our newest ride, Havoc, is uh, a top star tour from Soriani and Moser, and you just see those in Germany as well, not necessarily elsewhere in the world. So we kind of try and change things up and make it unique, not only the fact that it's an indoor park that stays open you know, 365 days a year, but with some unique uh, rides and experiences and roller coasters. For our roller coaster and our original drop tower, they were actually built before the building was put in place. So the rides came up first and then we built the envelope around those bigger rides. And ever since we've been changing, expanding, like adding new rides, taking old rides out and just trying to bring the park new life. When we do bring new attractions in, it means to do a full survey of an area of existing attractions and basically mapping out you know what can fit here what's the best fit for this spot we're weaving these new attractions in and amongst the existing ones but you know what we we try our best to make it work and find things that are great for this park and a an exciting uh, addition You know, there's so many challenges. The big one is maintenance. We never have a full shutdown, so we're always rotating rides out to do their annual inspections. And that means that we can't have, you know, all 28, 30 of our rides open on any given day. So Mindbender, it will have its occasional downtime if they have to replace like an updrive tire or something like that. But what we do is we have six trains that we rotate on and off the track. So at any given time, we have two or more in the shop that are being rebuilt, like completely taken apart, rebuilt, and then put back on the, on the track. So it has a lifespan and so many runs. I believe it's about 10,000 runs before we switch it out and do a, a full inspection, full rebuild, and bring it back. And then our track is also inspected in the evenings when the park is closed. In West Ham's Mall, you're going to experience a water park, an indoor lake with aquatic animals that you can visit the aquariums, mini golf, uh, skating rink, all these things that are all indoors that you wouldn't typically see elsewhere in the world. If you're interested in coming to see a theme park, the Schwarzkopf Mindbender is, is number one. Even though it's an old attraction, it, it definitely holds its own. It's unique in its design and its layout and it's indoors, so that kind of brings uh, an element of thrill and, and excitement because you're so close to other rides and the building envelope around you. So if you're North America, it makes sense to kind of make the trip up north to Canada to see this indoor amusement park.